In this session, we're going to add some more components to our custom subassembly part. As you can see, we're picking up where we left off. I've got my basic lane on screen here. Let's create some custom daylighting. I'm going to start by dragging this panel over and then we'll choose fit to screen and I'm going to back up a little bit. We'll pan this over. To do the daylighting, I am going to need a surface target. So we'll get that by coming down to target parameters and I'll create a parameter. This parameter will be a surface. For the name, I'll call it EG. And then for the display name, I'm going to call this EG surface. For the preview value, I could enter that here, or remember, I could just drag that target on screen. I'm gonna drag this down a little bit. Next, I need to determine whether I'm in a cut or fill state. To do that, I'm going to come over to the toolbox and I'll create an auxiliary point. This is like a ghost point, if you will. It'll never be displayed in Civil 3D, but I can use this point to create calculations. Let me drag my flowchart down a little bit so I have room. We'll take this auxiliary point and I'll drag this over and I'll drop it beneath my flowchart. I'll use my arrow keys to push this up a little bit. So I'm creating this new point called AP1. If I look in the properties, I'll shift this around a little bit. If I look in the properties, I can see that point AP1 is going to be defined from a point. I'd like it defined from point two. Let's back this up a little. I'll pan it over. I'm gonna turn the codes off too, just to clean things up a little bit. So AP1 is gonna be defined from point two, and I'd like this placed. Let me open the type menu here and I'll choose Delta X on surface. So from point two, you're going to go no distance in the X direction and the target surface is going to be EG, the target that we just made. So you can see AP1 rides here beneath point 2. So as I change my offset here, wherever P2 goes, AP1 is always going to be directly beneath it. Now that I have that point, I can use this to determine whether I'm in cut or fill. On the toolbox, let me drag this down and I'll choose decision. I'll drag this over and I'll drop this in my flowchart. I now have a decision. I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of clean that up a little bit. Let me select the decision. And then I can come down here and enter an expression. I'm going to type P2.Y is greater than AP1.Y. So if the Y value of point 2 is greater than the Y value of AP1, I will be in a fill situation. If it's not, then I'm in cut. In the event you're wondering about how you can create these expressions, you can come up and visit the help menu. From here, you'll come down to entering or calculating property data. We'll choose API functions, and you can just run down the list and see all of the different things that you can do. Let me close the help documentation. So I've got my decision. Let me zoom in. Once again, I apologize for my screen size here. Let me zoom in so we can see the decision there. We'll drag this over. So let me drag in a point now. We'll put the point on the left side. Let me drag this down, and I can also adjust the arrows too. If you don't like the connection, you can always click these and they've got grips. Let me grab the grip at the end if I can get it, and I'll connect this to the top. So you can see this is the true situation, so this will be fill. In fact, if I want to, if I click decision, I can rename these as well. If you want to make this more intuitive in the flowchart, I can say this is a fill situation. So let me drag this over. I'll fit the screen. We'll back up. So I just dragged over a point, and I happen to be in a fill situation now. So I dragged over point P5. I want P5 drawn relative to point P2. That's where the daylight's going to start from. And I'd like that placed. Let me open the type here, and I will choose slope to surface. And then my slope is going to be, just to make this show up a little bit better on screen, I'm going to make it negative 2 to 1. And then I will come down, my surface target's going to be EG, and I would like to add a link. Okay, so we can see how that's going to daylight now in a fill situation. Just a simple two-to-one slope. Now, let's take care of a cut situation. If I'm in cut, let me drag my surface up. Okay, you can see as long as I'm below, I can see fill. If I drag it up to cut, well, now it doesn't know what to do. Let's say if we're in a cut situation, we're going to create a small ditch. So we'll do that. I'm going to drag a point over. Let me fight with my flowchart here a little bit. I'll drop the point over to the right, and you can see that the point was connected to that previous point. I don't want to do that. Let me select that arrow, and I'll press Delete to remove it. Let me pull this down, once again fighting with my flowchart. Let me arrow this down a little bit, and there we go. I want to connect the new arrow, so let me click and hold on False here, and I'll pull this out, and I'll come down and connect it to this point. So I've got point six now. In the event I'm in a False situation or Cut, let me rename that. 
Come it over here. We'll call this cut. There we go. So in the event I'm in a cut situation, we're going to drop in 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is going to be placed relative to, now notice I should be able to see 0.2 here. You should be able to see every point that occurs prior to the current point. Now in the event this happens, let me take this arrow. I'm going to create a new one. We'll see what we get. We'll pull this out. I'll click. Let me grab this. We'll open it up. There we go. Now we're seeing the whole menu. So 0 0.6 is going to be placed relative to 0 0.2. It's going to be placed using slope and delta x. Let's go negative 2 to 1 and delta x will come out 2 feet. So there's my first link. Let's drag over another point now. We'll start building the ditch. Okay, not worried so much about my arrows. I could pull that over and connect to the middle, but it's working for right now. 0.7 is going to be relative to 0.6, and it is going to be delta x, delta y. Let's go in the y direction. I'm sorry, we'll go in the x direction, maybe a foot. Let's back up a little bit. I'll pan this over, and then I'll add one more point. We'll drop this down. There we go. We'll arrow that over. So P8 is going to be placed based on P7, and we'll do slope to surface. And my slope in this case is going to be positive 2 to 1. My surface target will make that EG. There we go. That looks good. Now, uh, let me pull this over a little bit. We're starting to get down towards the bottom of the flow chart here. Don't worry. You can always use this tool and drag it out. You can make it as tall or as wide as you like. Okay. Coming back here. Let me go to fit to screen. So now we can see our geometry and cut. If I drag this down, I'm in fill. So could I have made this as a separate daylight object? I certainly could have. It just comes down to the design intent you're trying to solve and personal preference. Now that I've got my daylight working, let's take care of the codes for this. I'm going to select L6 here. We'll drag this over. And I would like the point here. P6 will give that a code of hinge. And we'll give the link a code of top. I'll put a comma and then we'll do datum. If I'm going to make a surface here, that could represent the top or the bottom. Then we'll go to the next one. I'm going to grab it from the flow chart. That'll be easier. This link will have a top or a datum. And the P7 point code is going to be hinge. I'll press tab to accept. I can turn the codes on if I want to see those. I could also zoom in a little bit better to clean this up. Just going quick now. P8, we're going to make this code daylight. This is where it daylights to the existing ground surface. And then the link is going to have a code of top and datum. There we go. So that's my cut situation. Let me grab the existing ground surface and I'll pull this down to a fill situation. This gives me access to the link. Makes it a little easier to select here. And then our P5 code is going to be daylight. And then the link for this is going to be top and datum. Perfect. Okay, let me pull this down. Let's look at one last thing before we go back to Civil 3D and test this a final time. Let me choose Fit to Screen. I'm going to turn the codes off for a second. So this isn't too bad. I've got my lane now. My lane supports a lot of things. I've got a lot of control over it. I've got my cut and my fill situation taken care of. I could go through and create other input parameters for cut fill slope and assign those to these links if I want to, if I want control over that. I'd like to do one more decision. Let's, let's involve the event viewer here, show you how we can do that. So currently I'm coming down and I'm making a decision. Is the elevation of 0.2 greater than the elevation of AP1? Actually, we can see that in the tooltip there. So if it is, then it's a fill situation. But what if I have a limit on how much fill I can have? Well, I could make another decision. Let me do this. I'm going to take the connection that I have here and I'll delete it. And then I'll take this connection. I'll pull this down and I'm going to add another decision. Let's come down and we'll grab decision. We'll drag this over. I'll drop it here. And then I don't like the arrow, so I'll select it and I'll delete. So in the event we are in fill, let me pull this over and we can create another decision. I'll just connect this to the top if I can. Be really nice if I could do that without the crazy arrow. There we go. So in this decision, let me select it. I'm going to come down and say P2.Y minus AP1.Y. Is that value greater than 3? We'll say that's my max fill. If that's false, then go ahead and do the connection like we had before. If that's true, then we've exceeded our max fill. So let me come down to the toolbox and I'll choose report message and I'll drag this up and drop it. We'll pull it over here. So if that's true, then we can report an error. If I select the object, I can come down for my message and notice the error level. 
error informational or warning. I'm going to say it's a warning. Technically, it's not an error. It's just a heads up. We'll say you've exceeded the max fill. There we go. Let me press enter. And then we can test this. We'll fit to screen. And if I go to the event viewer right here, you can see no events. So I'm in a fill situation. But if I drag this down far enough, let me pan this up. If I drag this down far enough, Right there, I can see that I've exceeded the max fill. So now as I use this component in Civil 3D, I can have it come up and warn the engineer in the event I'm violating a particular design requirement. All right, so I've got my part finished, and I'd like to go through now, and we'll save it again, and then we'll import it back into Civil 3D. We'll do that in the next session.